Lately I've been feeling things change We've been working hard, no sleep, get it every day And I swear that we ain't stopping till we pay Yeah, the pressure on, gotta make it work, triple play, yeah This is Triple Play Fantasy Basketball. Back again, year three. I'm your host, Coach James Lewis. On the other end, Doc Mendelson, not to be confused with Jacob Dunn. Ain't done yet. Eric's been here for two years. We just got to update that. But, hey, I'm happy to bring in another year of NBA basketball, talk a little fantasy with my guy on the other end. We we going back and forth where uh, we have different perspectives of the game of basketball, especially when it comes to fantasy. What That's up, right. Doc? One, one, of us, one of us knows what we're talking about, and the other is hosting, right? Well, one of us is champions in leagues uh, the other one is commissioner of, and the other one is yet to be in the <laughs> finals. So, Jacob, that's or James talking pre-pandemic. All that is, is history's wiped. Yeah, it would be uh, back-to-back on the first two years if this commissioner didn't make – the last week of the season, the finals of the playoffs. What, what kind of amateur move was that? Commissioners, if you're listening to this, don't have criers like James in your league. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should stress. put your well, maybe you should put your hat in more than one league because uh right now you haven't made it to the finals yet. So if I got an invite to another league, I would, but I haven't. Uh, I digress then. Maybe I should send you an invite. All right, folks, you're here for fantasy basketball. And I know most of us do 10 or 12 team leagues. We cater our um, commentary towards that categories league. Um, we do sprinkle in a little bit of points leagues and here and there, but mainly you're doing head to head, you're doing cats. And um, that's what our league talks about. It's important to know the schedule going forward. Um, the first week is huge though, because you could find somebody that's on the waiver wire or free agents that could be league long holds. Uh, typically, this show deals with some streamers, people that, you know, are, are short holds. But sometimes you can get a season long hit in the first week is important for that. Uh, taking a look at the games watch next week, um, teams with two, the Rockets, Clippers, 76ers and Kings. Maybe not picking up those guys this week. Everybody else got three or four. So play those play that waiver wire. Sometimes a numbers game. All right. The first man up which right now is 64% rostered going up to 70%. Um, I, I saw him starting a little bit in the preseason. I was excited because when he plays basketball, uh, his his points per minute is, is strikingly high. And his first two games, uh, he did not disappoint at all. He had 36 against Cleveland. He had 30 against Dallas. Uh, he's a bucket-getting machine since probably since he was in the crib. Honestly, I mean, he has more points all time um, in Oak Hill history, high school. He goes on to LSU and averages about 30. (laughs) He's good for all of that. Um, They're finally, you know, they're putting the ball in his hands and at the end of games. And I'm I'm loving seeing Cam Thomas kind of fit in with this Brooklyn Nets team, getting some opportunity. Let me ask you, Coach, would you sell high on Cam Thomas right now? So he's averaging 33 points per game. He's also shooting 62.5% from the field. And he's averaging 29 minutes. And Brooklyn, we kind of don't know the shape of the organization. We all, maybe me, I thought Mikhail Bridges was going to be the the 1A option. And he's kind of taken a step back. Ben Simmons is the guy that, you know, has the ball in his hands a lot distributing. I mean, there's no way he can keep this pace up the entire season, right? No. I mean, but I think that any savvy owner knows that as well. And if you're trying to pull a fast one with a – Two like two for one trade is my favorite. It's like I got Cam Thomas and some other player for like an act like an actual starting person on a roster that people throw. But like you put the stats together, yeah, I'm not I'm not buying. I'm not going for that. I mean, you know, I really think that Bridges is gonna ball out this year and he's gonna be the person that you really want to hold there. Like Cam doesn't hit enough the threes for my liking. He doesn't he doesn't pass the ball as we that's, well that's know. For sure. Like, he's not going to get defensive stats. He's going to get you points. He's more of a points league personnel. Um, but, you know, you got to like the buckets that you're getting right now. 
against the Cavs in the opener, he had the fifth most amount of minutes coming off the bench, took the most amount of shots. So it's just interesting that he, both games, he's been the leader in shot attempts. So just if that would continue or not, I, I could see Bridges or Cam Johnson, you know, maybe having more games where they shoot more than him. But. Well, that's the thing. When he's in the game, he's going to shoot the ball. Like, he scoffed at Steve Nash when Steve was like, yeah, you know, you can, you can pass a little – you can play make pass a little bit more. He's like, no, nah. shoot a shoot, and that's what he does. Like, but I I love watching him isolate and play basketball. I, like, imagine trying to guard that guy. It's impossible. <laughs> His step-back game is one of the best in the league. Uh, moving on to Xavier Tillman. Now, he probably – is hard to come by now. He was like the big, big pickup. Once we found out that Steven Adams was having season ending uh, surgery, which is wild to think about because he had that injury in January <laughs> of this year. And like, now he's going to get surgery. Like I'm pretty sure that Memphis mishandled that whole situation by Charlie right here. Like, what are we doing here? But uh, Xavier Tillman, uh, 13, nine, three getting stocks galore. Um, in his first uh, games and, and starting there over in Memphis. And we know we all well know that Jaron Jackson Jr. can't rebound worth the crap. So he somebody's got to grab him, right? So what, what you think about Xavier? Tilly. That's going to be my first nickname of the year for him. <laughs> James, we talked about a, a little bit pre-show. This might be the highest his value is. You know, obviously when John Moran comes back, that's going to be a little bit more usage. And he still has 22 games to serve on that suspension, but – Memphis is 0-3. They kind of look uninspired playing basketball. Um, I worry that we've seen the best from him scoring-wise. He took 16 shots the first game, then it went down to 9, then it went down to 7. So I think from a categories league, he's going to give you rebounds and he's going to give you stocks. I mean, he has six steals on the season, but I think if you're expecting a consistent double-double or you know somebody that could give you 15 points on a given night, I don't think Tilly is the guy. Also, like, yeah, he had a couple threes, which we saw that was a big theme on the opening night is, like, players that don't shoot threes are all of a sudden, like, shooting them, trying to make them, trying to make, you know, defensive think, hey, maybe uh, Jeremy Sokon is a is a, is a three-point sniper. Stop. Stop. All right. We'll talk about my guy later. But uh, I think the Tillman stock, you might be able to pull over on one, on somebody, like, with a trade option because I don't think that this is going to last long. I think this is a streamer option. Um, one thing, Santi Aldama is out, but Memphis is clearly small without Steven Adams. It didn't work in the playoffs. It's not going to work this year. We already mentioned Jared Jackson Jr. struggling, rebounding the ball. They need to trade for a big. And if I'm Memphis, I'm picking up the phone in Chicago and saying, Nikola Vucevic, get over here right now because it's surely needed for them to sustain, you know, the, the – Success they've had in having the past two seasons. They're missing Dylan Brooks. That was a joke. <laughs> Which he's he's a free agent in uh, the league I'm in, and I, I'm in a ten team league, and I ain't touching him. I ain't sniffing that. So Dylan, you can have Dylan Brooks. Uh, but a guy that we recommend you picking up, and he's only fifty one percent rostered, is Derek Lively. Um, going from game one to two, they're already putting him in the starting lineup. He's gonna get blocks. He's shooting 91.7% because it's just a lob. You just throw the ball up to him, and he is going to finish. He's going to get his boards. He is a seamless fit in this Dallas Mavericks team and uh, somebody that they surely needed. He looks like a baby Tyson Chandler, and I'm loving everything from Derek Lively, the second, who didn't have his greatest run for Duke basketball last year, but I see a little revival here playing with Dallas. They also don't have a lot of height on that team. Rashawn Holmes has been a DNP coach's decision. Uh, they have Dwight Powell and Maxi Kleba. But other than that, they are very, very uh, limited in the front court. I mean, think about how many guards they have and how few front court players they have. So Derek Lively played 31 minutes uh, to begin the season and obviously 17 you don't like to see, but the fact they gave him 31 minutes opening night shows that he could be hopefully having that upside. Um, just from Side note, Luca's bank three was just <laughs> one of the craziest, That's crazy, awesome shots that I've ever seen. I mean, it was just, it's just bad offense. Just met with the great player. He got the ball like three times on 
and then he just had no more. He had no time left, and he's like, "I." Hey, he probably I'm, called I'm Bank. Too. Yeah, sure. I know he did. I know he did. I, he meant to do that. Oh, what greatness we're seeing here in today's basketball! All right, um, Isaiah Stewart, power four center, eligible, sixty four percent rostered. He's gonna get you a lot of rebounds. Um, <laughs> again, the theme: players that don't shoot threes are shooting threes now. He hit two on the first night. Um, what lacks with Isaiah Stewart is he doesn't get too much defensive stats. And you see this big brawlic big guy, and you think like, hey, maybe he gets some steals or blocks. He doesn't really get those. Um, Jalen Dern is the steal of the year. If you have him on your team, you're grinning ear to ear right now. Uh, he's somebody that you can look at. Obviously, no, we Bogdanovich is out for four weeks. So insert, you know, some time for other players. We have Stewart. Um, the other person uh, mentionable, and, and Stewart's going to get you a lot of rebounds, um, is Alec Burks. He plays the one, he plays the two, and he plays the three. Uh, he scores the ball. He's been hitting the three. He's like nearly four a game. He's not going to get you much other than that, and he's not going to shoot a high percentage, but um, having that eligibility, he's somebody that you could stream if they got like two games on a Friday and a, sun, a Sunday. You want to you got to pick up at the end of the week. Definitely points league Burks. Uh, and you know what, Alec Burks, if somehow you listen to this podcast, first of all, we appreciate you. Uh, we will never say any, anything negative. But last Since, season. Yeah, that was your, your – yeah, you hate last, him. Last season, I think it was the first 40 games he didn't have a block, and now he has a block in each of the first three games. So maybe you were listening to me, Alec Burks. <laughs> uh, moving on, starting at point guard, Kobe White. Now, he's coming off just in an abysmal game last night. We had – Zero points playing 30 minutes had two like he did absolutely nothing. Um, but in the first game, it shows a little bit of promise. He's gonna hit threes, he's gonna get some dimes, he's gonna get some rebounds. He's a categories league guy, and he should be rostered in more leagues. 40 percent is not doing Kobe White credit, expect you know, Lamella Ball is out for forever, and you know, you got Alex Caruso that they said is coming off the bench, even though he hit his game winner. Uh, Kobe White um, should be rostered in more leagues, and um, if if he's out there and you got some question abilities, I, I would I would look to him. This is a stash too. The Bulls are one and two. They had a players only meeting after the first game, which I have never seen before. Billy Donovan is the favorite to be the first coach fired. There are going to be some changes, and if they get rid of DeRozan or Levine, that opens up way more playing time for Kobe White, Blow and he's already averaging it up. And he's Blow it already up, Chicago. What are we yeah. doing? He's already averaging 33 minutes per game. So they are playing him. They just signed him to an extension this offseason. But, you know, in terms of scoring, he's probably the fourth option right now. But if one of those guys goes, you'll probably see the usage go up a lot. Nothing screams blow it up like Zach Levine having a career high 51 points and still losing by 16 to a team that won 17 games last year. Hey, show some respect on the Pistons. All right, you just talked up Jalen Duran, Alec Burks, and they got Cade back. You can't flip-flop. Don't be a politician. Okay, they they won the least amount of games in the NBA last year. Gosh. All right, uh, Max Cruz has uh, a, a new team, a new hairdo, and he's balling out. Uh, giving, a, giving us 19 a game, nine boards for it. Like, what is this guy on? He's still he's shooting 37%. That means he is. He's got the green light over there for some reason. He's just lighting it up. I, I think he's a really good fit in Cleveland, in all honesty. I mean, they just need people to knock down shots, and he ends up looking like a great signing. He had, a, you know, 21. We've seen him get on heaters before. He had seven threes in the opener uh, against Brooklyn. Uh, what you like about Spruce, or maybe you thinking Lavert or Curl. They all play shooting guard, small forward, like – you have the the choice of the three. If somebody goes down, you definitely want to look at those leads. You want to keep your eye on those shooting guard small forwards in Cleveland. Well, the thing I like about Max Streets is they just paid him recently. Four years, $63 million this offseason. So they're going to give him the time. What I think is why we're seeing his game take to a new level is because he's playing more. He's averaging 39.3 uh, minutes over the first three games. And he played 80 games in Miami last year, averaging 28 minutes per game. So that's a big increase. That's almost uh, – uh, that's like 40% more playing time. The rebounds I do think are going to go down. Jared Allen has missed the first three games with an ankle yes. issue. I think when he comes back, uh, he's going to dominate the paint a little bit more. But he's shooting the ball, 20 attempts, 
the Cavs haven't been healthy. Darius Garland has missed a couple games. Donovan Mitchell was out uh, last night. So I don't think from a, co- a scoring perspective, we will see him average 20 on a, on a weekly or on a nightly basis, but he could be good for 16, 17 points a game. And compared to where you drafted him, I think that's a value. And uh, I know that he, like he's 64% rostered, but I'm looking at Levert, who's 26% rostered. You can find him basically in every league. He's averaging a dub. He's giving you three rebounds, five assists. He's gonna like that's he, he's gonna get you a little bit more uh, of the playmaking numbers, giving you a steal and almost a block. But uh, both of those guys are shooting thirty seven percent. Like like that's not winning basketball with Cleveland. You'll see those numbers go up. You'll see their shot attempts go down. Um, Okoro is averaging one three per game, which is <laughs> that's big time for him right now and in a very small sample size. But like yeah, like. Uh, these are players to watch and basically to stream. Um, the Struce is a guy that I've seen in my league last year be picked up and dropped maybe like 15 times throughout the year. It's just one of those things. And he, and he gets, he goes through heaters. Uh, but if anybody goes down in the front court, uh, in the backcourt, I'm looking more towards like a Levert because I think that he, like when he gets usage, he gets you numbers. My trepidation and there we're using big boy words on this uh, podcast oh, is he can't boy. seem to, he can't seem to stay healthy. And it seems that he's his most valuable when they limit his minutes. So right now he's averaging 35.7 over, over the first three, obviously it's a small sample size, but the most he's played in a season is 32.9. And that was with the Pacers. But I mean, James, I don't even have to get to run down the numbers of games played by season. You know, he misses a lot of time. I I mean I can't disagree. He he's not on the it, main it, graphic for a reason. Okay. Well, here, here's the thing: if you have Fab, I wouldn't break the bank on him. If you can get him for a couple bucks and use him now, yes. But I wouldn't. You know how you talked about it at the beginning, where some of these guys could be uh, season long guys to change it. I don't think Levert is that guy. Uh, I hate to agree with you. Woo! Bastard. All right, uh, Josh Okogi, a guy that you like, a guy that I don't. 30% roster, but hey, he is starting on that uh, Suns team, and he does provide um, some dog mentality as far as playing some really good defense. And uh, <laughs> for him, he caught a heater that first night, dropping 17 big ones. But like, I, I don't, I just don't see this uh, going forward. And um, he's just not for me, especially categories league. I mean, he might be a better real life player than a fantasy player. I will put that out there. Fact. But Bradley Beal has yet to play a game for the, through the first three, Devin Booker is sat too. Um, and, you know, Jordan Goodwin has been getting minutes, but this is what I see with Josh Okogie. And this is the opening night against the Warriors. He gets back to back offensive rebound and ones. Those are things that's going to earn him more playing time, 32, 32, 23 minutes. And they kind of blew out the jazz. I don't think there was a need to play him. I think he, when somebody goes down, or when one of their big three doesn't play, I think Akogi is going to be the guy that fills in, and he's shooting guard, small forward eligible. So, you know, if the Suns have four games in a week or if they have back-to-backs, I think Akogi is a guy. He's rostered in 30% of leagues, but I, I don't worry about his playing time, and I think hey, hopefully he produces when he gets those minutes. Nice real-life player. Fantasy sucks. Um, I'll take Eric Gordon or Grayson Allen over him. For Bro, Suns, Eric Gordon but- just going to hit threes occasionally <laughs> okay i mean i'm not, I'm not picking any, uh, any three of those but like the fact that okogi's three on my list for those guys bro he's a six three guy with a seven foot wingspan they don't grow on trees okay um mo- I, moving on to s- some people that are a little bit more fantasy uh worthy to talk about and that is kyle anderson which uh, categories leagues uh, you like him. He does a little bit of everything. Although he hasn't had a block this season, he does that um, for fun. Uh, he gives you about 10 points, about six boards, about five assists. And, like, that's kind of consistent with his career um, of of late. And he's going to, you know, shoot high percentages. Um, with Minnesota, um, he fits a fits a role that you need. Small four, power four, eligible. Um I, I I think forty two percent roster is a little low. I think that he's he's a higher option than um, definitely in, in the Kogi and other guys that we've mentioned. What, 
what do you like about Kyle or what you don't like about slow mo? I mean, I would stream him, and I think he could be that. He's guy a, that has he a is random. a top A. My my bad to cut you off, but he is a top tier streamable guy because, like, especially with like a category, it's like I maybe I need blocks, maybe I need still. He's gonna get you one of those things, and he is, and yeah. and that's what I think he's a streamer in categories leagues. He's gonna have a random triple double this year, but he's not gonna score. There's enough people between Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, and Carl Anthony Towns that want to shoot the ball. So, you know, that that's kind of knowing your league is you're not going to get much value from Kyle Anderson, I think, in a points league. But uh, categories league, I mean, first first game, nine rebounds, five assists, a steal. Like, those are numbers that could help you win, uh, you know, your certain category. And especially when you're eligible in two positions, you know, that, that always helps with the roster flexibility. I like him, but I'm, I'm more of a Nas Reed guy. So yeah. Nas last night had 25 points, eight boards. He had four threes. He had two steals in 28 minutes versus Miami. If he Man, gets... why, 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 why'd they trade for Gobert when they could have just played Nas Reed? I mean, it's just the dumbest trade of all time. I mean, we talked about this before on the pod. Like, guess what? Guess it's, what? Was it blo- it's, Blocker it's, Kessler had more blocks than Gobert last year. It was the it's, dumbest. It's, t- they gave it's, four t- it's first tougher one. for me to. De- it's tougher for me to defend this trade each it's day. The dumbest trade of all time. And you're a Gobert guy. Did you want to really bring this up? Hold on. Did you really want to bring this up? <laughs> it says the Go- Gobert stand. Like I mean, it was here's the, the dumbest thing. trade it, of all time. Like, open up the open up the lane, but let's clog it up with with Gobert. Here's like, the thing. I don't think the roster construction is, is good. Like if they could get, if they could trade Carl Anthony Towns and that would be very tough with that contract. Cause he's due to make almost 60 million in the final years of it. He's and they could get some, problem, and they could get, I and mean, they could get some shooters. I, I don't think Carl Anthony Towns is the answer. I think build around Anthony Edwards and course. Rudy Gobert, but it wasn't to bring in Gobert. It, I, it, they overpaid for him. I will say that they overpaid for him, but I think if you utilize Rudy Gobert correctly, Bro. He can help your team. He can help Anthony Edwards do what? Clog up the lane? He's well, unguardable. Can... At least at least Cat stretches it out as one of the better shooting big men of all time. Like like that that was gonna work. They messed up everything. I'm sorry. You could have Minnesota, gone with a small you could have gone with a smaller lineup and just had cut Rudy your go ties, bear trade go bear for whatever you can get. Trade him to the Wizards. I wouldn't mind. Get him out of here. All right. Um moving on. The Hawks. Uh, Jalen Johnson, uh, 16, eight, two, and, um, he's a stock stuffing machine. Like that's what he does. He gets, he gets blocks, he gets steals and, um, and he's getting playing time. Now John Collins is out and it's kind of like, it's tricky. Like, do you get Sadiq Bay? Do you go Jalen Johnson? Do you go DeAndre Hunter? DeAndre Hunter had, you know, 27 in one of his games. You can find all of them mostly on the free agency. It just depends on like. Whose night is it, kind of? And uh, right now, I take Jalen Johnson over the three, but it's you know, we all know DeAndre Hunter. Even though he's he's an exquisite defensive player coming out of Virginia, he doesn't get any defensive stats. So uh, and and Sadiq Bay is he's hit or miss. So I, I'd go with Johnson over the over the two. Um, but honestly, I'm not touching any three of them. I agree. Damn, look at him; he's jacked. <laughs> In this photo, he is, yeah. he is only jacked. 21 years old. Once upon a time, uh, UNC, you were talking about some UNC stuff. Hoops, he just like went home packing. He's like, you know, it's probably better for both sides. If I, I stop playing anymore, I'm just gonna put my name in the hat in the draft. Like, I just don't like that from a character standpoint, but I'm glad he's getting some opportunity over there in Hot Atlanta. Um, I don't know why this guy is is in here. He's seventy six percent roster. You can't find him nowhere. But hey, Shaden Sharp is somebody that Doc likes, and um, he's getting some opportunity now. That Dame Dollars out of out of the business. One of the most young electrifying players in the league. He can score. He's above the rim. Um, he he makes the Portland Trailblazers a fun watch. Uh, Scooter Henderson has had a a kind of a rough start to this season, but I. It, don't sell your stock on Henderson if you got him on your team. He's going to blossom at some point. And um, this, I guess this gives us an excuse to talk about some Portland basketball. Well, the thing, especially with Sharp, Dame's gone, but Anthony, Anthony Simon's torn UCL in his right yes. thumb out four to six Huge. weeks. 
And the first game with Simons not playing at all, he played 41 minutes, 23 shot attempts, 11 threes, five rebounds, two assists, two steals. From watching him in person, he has a high motor. He's 20 years old. So, you know, sometimes with the veterans, you know, we see Jimmy Butler is sitting the third game for rest. That's not going to be shade and sharp. And that's one of the things I like about young players with opportunity is they're going to take the most of it. And I, I think with Portland, there was hope last year. You know, they've always kind of teetered around 40 wins, maybe snuck in in the playoffs. It seems like they're fully embracing a tank and a rebuild. And they have a lot mm-hmm. of new faces there. And Shaden Sharp is actually, in his second year, one of the longer uh, tenured guys now, which is weird to say. Um, and I, I'd be remiss not to mention Malcolm Brogner is going to be eating off of that Simons thing. He had 20 in the opener. He had 18 in his next game. Uh, he, he He's always been good with assists. He's always shot um, high percentages. They're, I think they're going to trade 50, him. 49. They're going to trade him. Come on. He ain't staying the entire year in Portland. <laughs> he's also not going to stay healthy this entire year. But yeah, when he fact. does, when he is, when he is healthy, he, he does well. Um, and I think he's a, he's a good veteran presence and influence in, on this team. So I, I, I don't see them moving him, but like trade deadline, I, I think that those talks will heat up. But I think that he's fantasy relevant until that time ticks. And you know what? We thought maybe DeAndre Ayton was going to have a high usage. He has 13 shots in two games. Crickets, so. because like, why? Just that's exactly 20, 23 minutes the first game, 30 minutes. The second. Granted, he shot seven to nine. He had a double double, 14 points, wow. 15 rebounds. And Ayton might never be that guy that takes 20 shots a game. So. Wow. You know, even more reason to pick up Shaden Sharp if he's available. All right. Um, Herb Jones, he apparently had this injury before at, at the beginning of the season. And um, he played 38 minutes in that first game. And he's a he's a stock machine. Like uh, he's safe. He's a safe-ish, safe-ish player. Like you can kind of know what you're going to get out of him. But he can, can win you over in stocks. And especially with Trey Murphy, the third out. Um, he's not the worst option. I'm looking for the scoring to go up a little bit this year. Average 9.8 last year. He shoots a good percentage, 47 for his career. I'm hoping the rebounds go up a little bit from four. I never think you're going to get superstar numbers from Herb Jones, but I think someone from a stocks category will be very, very valuable in there. And if he can just uptick, like I said, the points and the rebounds a little bit, that's a mainstay for the entire season. Um, I'll pass. But like, like I said, you know, there could, could be other options now. No, New Orleans. Just weird, wait till Zion watching. gets hurt again. Yeah, I mean, it's it's inevitable. I like if you see, he's still a spectacle, but he's still he's so heavy. He, he like he's thick. Like you had all that time. Like lose some weight, bro. Like we're missing out. Like because I feel like he could be like a top five, top ten. All right, let's end the show now. Let's end the show. All right. And last, but certainly not least, Jeremy Sohan. They get (laughs) Wendy in the draft, and they play the same position. Like, what are we going to do with our our darling, our our wonderful lottery pick from from the year before? Like, what an amazing rookie. Oh, let's throw him at point guard. Starting at point guard, Jeremy Soa. Like, that is so bold. Like, that's so dope. And he's coming through. Uh, 14 points, seven boards, five dimes. He hit two threes in the opener, giving you some steal. You know what he does on the defensive end. But um, Jeremy Sokon, it's 56. <laughs> you kidding me? How he's does it definitely, feel to He's upset? definitely on the bottom of somebody's bench, and he's definitely on my team. How does it feel to obsess about somebody that doesn't know that you exist? It was speechless. <laughs> fantasy bass. I say in, in my fantasy, we're bros. <laughs> it's my man. <laughs> we go out to the club. Listen. Go out to the club. He's 20 years old. Exactly. You Somebody got to get him to drinks. You know what I mean? He's not even legal to drink alcohol. He's the coolest guy in the club. I can't wait for Sohan to have a bad game, and I'll text you. No, he's like one of the first people that greeted Wimby. He's like, come on, man. I'm I sure will say, wrong. he got first basket uh, in Wemby's debut. I thought it was going to be Wemby. I thought they designed a play. And Sohan, just being the selfish person he is, shoots an open layup. 
Pass it to Wemby for the first basket, darn it. Um, I will say, and so I'm a Spurs owner of, of several players. Uh, Keldon Johnson, I think his value is going to sustain. I think he's going to be a 20-point-per-game guy. I think Vassell is clearly on the rise. That that player is just uh, a very efficient shooter, um, and he's getting better in the other facets of the game. Where uh, Sohan... And Trey Jones going back and forth with this point guard position is hard because I, I'm in a league where I own both of them. Um, once I found out that Sohan was starting, I, like, I definitely had to figure that out. Like if one goes down, their value goes up. But right now, it's it's, it's a hard hold, like for both of them because they're not going to like win you leagues or win you win you weeks. But they're they're good players. But it is something that like to think about and it is it is a tough like these become tough def- decisions as owners like do i hold or do i go and get the streamable guy do i get a kobe white over a trey jones it it just becomes a little difficult yeah and just a, a strategy thing if you're winning your matchup look forward to next week take advantage of guys that have four games or back to backs because basketball i think more than fantasy football it's about Qual- uh, quantity over quality in mm. some instances you know if you can get guys that are playing more games greater chance you'll get more counting stats and that will add up whether you're in a points league or a categories league as opposed to football you set your lineup everybody has the same amount of people so take that extra step you know follow the schedule just try and be savvy with your pickups because that's going to make a difference and on that point it's uh it's Sunday. The Hawks play Sunday, Monday. Uh Jalen Johnson that we mentioned, DeAndre Hunter, um, Bogdanovich. Um, all of these guys are on the table and uh, Sadiq Bay. These guys are available, and you know, you could get an extra game, and you're not gonna feel bad for cutting, you know, Sadiq Bay on Monday after two games, you know, and and moving on and figuring out who else you can have that streamable so you know we're here to help you win your league it starts week one but it definitely doesn't finish that we've seen people um have the best standings going into the playoffs week lose week one we've seen that from the commissioner of the league that i've been in um that might may or may not be my co-host right now that happens it happens like it's unlucky <laughs> sometimes injuries happen and you got to be there for when the injuries happen to pick up the guys. I'll just say, while I have not won a championship in my league, and I'll own up to it, I was going to win the COVID year. Um, I've made the playoffs every single year, and I have not blamed me missing the playoffs on what I decided to do before a draft. I'm just saying. Which is a reminder, commissioners, make sure your draft is early in the day so that, uh, especially on (laughs) football Sundays, so that way people don't spend all their money on auction drafts. Uh, We are in an auction draft. Um, I myself am a commissioner of a set of in category league, which is a little bit different. I know most of y'all are in nine categories league, 10 team, 12 team is what we cater to. Um, But we're here to make your team, your year as successful as possible. Um, Cross from me, Doc, man, I love shooting shit with you every week. And um, this is fun. This is real fun. And therapeutic. It is. We're going to provide content every week. It's going to be me and coach. Maybe maybe we'll sprinkle in Brad Stradamus in there, but we're always yep. going to give you the analysis to try to help you win your league. So please like and subscribe. Give a comment. We're happy to answer any questions you might have about guys, uh, whether you should pick up or drop them. And um, fantasy basketball should be fun. So remember that's first and foremost. All right. On the way out, our man's Bimbo from the DMV area. We are – from the DMV, I'm stationed out Baltimore. Doc is stationed out. I'm Baltimore. All right. I don't know who's, whose couch was on this week, so I had to ask. <laughs> All right, fellas. I'll see you next week. Lately, I've been feeling things change. Lately, I've been feeling things change. We've been working hard. No sleep. Get it every day. And I swear that we ain't stopping until we pay. Yeah, the pressure on. Gotta make it work. Triple play. Yeah.